Hello, everybody. Um, all right. So today, um, I actually want to uh, take you on a journey through our galaxy a little bit. And we start here, which is um, our universe. Uh, or a universe, and this is our galaxy. Um, not big, big, big. We, 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 that's later. <laughs> a little bit later. Um, but this is our, this is our uh, galaxy. We are, like, we are lost. So what do we do? Um, obviously, there's a great book, which is called um, The Hitchhiker's Guide to React VR. And this um, great book, I'm going to present you and walk you through so we can actually um, uh, do something and travel a bit in our galaxy. So first of all, I want to quickly start off with like, who knows the book A Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy? OK, quite a lot. Um, for those who don't know the book, um, that will be a really weird talk to you, but yeah. <laughs> um, and who of you uses React longer than three months? OK, uh, most of the people. Uh, for those of you who don't, this will be a very confusing talk to you. <laughs> All right, let's get started. Um, so before we actually can explore the galaxy, we, we, need, we need some basics, some, some groundwork. Um, and I want to start off like what means VR in general and, and um, how does it work? So first off, we have like these super fancy devices like the Oculus or the HTC Vive. Um, and then we have some lower level stuff, which is um, the Samsung Gear. And you put a phone into it. Um, pretty weird. What does it, how does it work? And then there's even like cardboard. And people call that a VR experience. And um, if you have tried that, like it's actually pretty, pretty good. Who, who of you has ever, ever tried the cardboard or any of these? Wow. A lot of people. OK, so you know what I'm talking about when I talk about a, an immersive experience. Um, so how does it work? Like, wh Why does this also count as, um, as VR? So we need a couple of, for, for the hardware, we need a couple of uh, critical pieces. First of all, we need a screen. We need the head tracking. And this is like a really important part, the head tracking. We need a head mount. So it actually has to be somewhat mounted to your head. Otherwise, it drops off pretty, um, yeah. Uh, unspectacular. Spectacular. Uh, and then we need lenses. Um, why lenses? Because, or, um, and that if the result of these four um, pieces actually has one very interesting effect, every person that tries it uh, tries that out, um, somewhat the, like the jawbone muscles stops to work. It's a very <laughs> interesting experience. Um, but yeah, that's. That's the result <laughs> of it. Um, so why do we need these lenses? Because if I take my phone, um, and especially this one, which actually can really um, has a VR experience, and if I put it in front of my face, I see a tiny screen. And it's not, even if I, I have like, this is my head mount, um, this is not a VR experience. So we need lenses to actually get people to have basically blow up this screen to a full um, full field um, um, eyesight um, experience. And what we use there is the convex, uh, is convex friends lenses. Uh, and what they do is like they basically blow up your screen into your, your whole um, field of sight. Um, how does this work? Basically, they take whenever you have a, um, a normal projected image um, through the lens, it gets distorted and it gets blown up. So this is this is way bigger um, than what you what you usually uh, than the original image. Um, the problem is if you do that with like if you just split an image and you or a, a video or, or your uh, your browser here um, into two screens um, and you put on the, the glasses, you basically see a very distorted, um, very distorted output. And it's um, tried. It's not a really good experience. Um, but what we can use, what we can do is we can use barrel distortion. So basically, we take the original image, we project it already um, to, to this barrel distorted image. And it works uh, as a counterpart. And what we get out is a um, 
uh, like a normal perceived image. And that's the whole trick between um, a VR experience. It's like basically you can take something that is very little on the screen and then blow it up to something that actually makes sense and you can see and, and you, you have it in your whole um, side of field. And that's how it looks like if you, if you render um, something on a, on a phone screen. And even the high, the high quality devices like the Oculus or HTC Vive, um, in the end, they, they don't do anything special. They, they just have a screen there and they show, or maybe two screens, but they basically show these two images um, and then render that for, that for you in exactly this uh, barrel distorted um, projection. All right, so that means we can actually build ourselves um, VR goggles. And yes, that's what people do. They build stuff like um, what we call here the spa auger, and that works. <laughs> so there's like there's not too much magic behind it. The the Lego? huh? Is that Lego? Nice. Uh, that's not Lego. <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> but yeah, it, it's like this is so. This is the first part of the introduction. So, but. Now, um, we want to go one step deeper. Now that we know this hardware part and how it works, we want to go into WebVR. Um, that's a pretty new thing. Um, what does it mean? Um, WebVR is an experimental JavaScript API that provides access to virtual reality devices, such as the Oculus Rift, um, HTC Vive, Samsung Gear VR, or Google Cardboard in your browser. Pretty cool. Like, all the VR stuff in your browser, that's amazing. Um, all the browser vendors are pretty enthusiastic, so ideally we would be there. The reality, unfortunately, is more like this. Um, so WebVR is not ready yet in a sense like if you take any browser, it's not in there yet. I think there's the, the only browser that has WebVR support out of the box without uh, changing any feature flag is um, the Samsung browser on the gear. Um, so if you have this Samsung, if you have a Samsung S6, S7, or S8, um, the default Samsung browser supports VR out of the box. The others don't yet. But we have feature flags, um, and we can actually activate it on all these browsers, and it's coming. It's really, really coming. So if you want to, um, if you want to try it out by yourself, like WebVR, um, you can go to webvr.info and for every browser that supports it, um, they have instructions how to get set up and how to activate these feature flags. Pretty cool. So what is WebVR? Um, WebVR, the API by itself, is actually like very, very tiny because in the end, WebVR is just a, a small API that gives you access to this external screen and then you get um, things like device animation frame. So you have usually we have this request animation frame where you can figure out like how often um, 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 the browser paints to your screen but you get the, uh, another you can actually get the external display and then get the information the refresh rate for this device. Um, and then you, you have uh, WebVR also contains um, controller input. You know, you have these controllers where we can move our hands and do something with them. That's also part of the WebVR. But like rendering itself, um, like what to render, if, if you render an image, if you render, um, if you render <laughs> WebGL, that's not part of the WebVR because uh, API, it's in the end, you just simply render images or you render uh, render a 3D scene with WebGL and that's all. And WebVR is just this API to like take whatever you render and basically m split it up and barrel distort it and uh, do all the magic that you don't have to care about. Um, and yeah, and for, for hardware it's pretty simple. You need just one of these browsers that supports it. Uh, and for the desktop you have like a virtual uh, reality headset like the Oculus or you use your smartphone and just some lenses on top. In the end, like these are pretty much the same. They are just uh, rendering higher um, resolutions. All right, so far so good about the, the basics. Um, how can we actually build stuff? Um, right now, there's, there's a couple of them already, but there's two I want to highlight, which is A-Frame. Um, it's a framework to make it very easy to, um, to build VR experiences. 
um, and it's um, supported by Mozilla and um, I haven't tried it yet but what I have seen so far it's actually ahead of React VR um, but yeah the, um, really really interesting stuff and the other one that I already mentioned and I'm gonna show you a little bit more is React VR so if you look at um, A-Frame I really want to give A-Frame a, a shout out here because they, they do some awesome stuff um, they, you can take this and uh, this is built with A-Frame and if you click here and you have your VR headset connected or if you open this website, uh, this is actually an iframe from the um, embedded here in this presentation, um, but if you, if you click here, it basically tries to connect um, to, to the VR device and then shows uh, on this VR screen uh, what's going to happen or like show exactly this scene that is rendered with WebGL, basically rendered with WebGL on your VR device. And that's pretty cool because you can build with WebGL uh, such an animation, such a scene, and um, you just use A-Frame or um, React VR and you get it out of the box for free in, um, in the browser. So people who have have no VR device can can actually explore it, but the way better experience obviously is if you use it in in um, with a VR device, and they have a lot of cool stuff like um, they have this visual inspector, um, so you can actually see the scene and see what's there. They also have this <coughs> they're basically like um, kind of web component based, maybe web comp I, don't, I don't know. I, as I mentioned, I haven't looked into it yet, but I'm, I'm definitely going to do that soon. But uh, you also, <coughs> if you go back to the scene um, and sound as well, uh, and I'm missing, uh, never mind, I wanted to show you the source, but uh, you have seen this. And they have uh, 360 degree videos and um, images, um, pretty cool stuff. All right. <coughs> so. But now that we know the basics, um, as I promised, we actually want to travel a bit. So let's travel. Um, Nick. Oh, yeah. When you're traveling through the galaxy, you should never forget your towel. That's right. <laughs> Absolutely right. Thank you very much, Patrick, for the reminder. When you're traveling, never forget your towel. <laughs> Remind these words. All right. So. Now that we are traveling for a galaxy, um, because you Earthians, uh, Earth, uh, phew, never mind, um, <laughs> Earthians, um, let's actually visit your planet and let's see what's happening there. Um, okay, we can see there is a VR experience with a 360 degree image. Um, some random dudes, you know. <laughs> um, Pretty cool. Like, how was this built? How, how did we make this? And whenever we are lost and we don't know what's going on, we obviously go back to our book, The Hitchhiker's Guide to React VR. So let's see what The Hitchhiker's Guide to React VR tells us. First of all, the most important thing, don't panic. Really, really important. <coughs> and then, um, I'm going to walk you through like the whole experience to get what you just have seen. And we start out, um, it's actually pretty simple. It, it won't take, this talk won't take until tomorrow. I actually can get this done in a couple of minutes. So the first thing you have to do is you have to install the React VR CLI. It's basically like create React app. Um, no, not, it, it creates a boilerplate, so it's not like create React app, but um, it's a pretty handy tool. And what you then, if you installed the React VR CLI, and if my Wi-Fi would work, that's a pity. Oh, yeah. So then you get React VR as a CLI command, and then you can do init, you, instead, you basically uh, start your first project, and you can, if you have yarn, it will use as yarn. If you don't have yarn, it simply uses npm. But what it does in the end is it just installs um, all the dependencies and sets up um, a project for you. Then you can cd into this project and you can do yarn or npm start. <coughs> and what will happen is it will boot up 
basically an example project at localhost um, 8082, 8081. Um, and then you can go there and you can see this project and you have your first React VR project up and running. And that's basically just a room with a hello text. And um, yeah, that's it. It's a chess room. All right. So to show you that, as an iframe, I included the same room here. And what's cool is if I don't have a VR device, and that's also like how usually you develop, um, you can actually be in there and play with it. But I can also click on VR and actually see it on the VR device. All right. <coughs> So let's dig a little bit deeper to see like what's the magic behind it. Um, first, we're going to explore like the files that are in this um, in this project that you just created. The first one, and that's probably the most important for you, is, is this index.vr.js, which is just a normal JavaScript file. I'm going to show it to you in a bit. Um, but in the end, this is where you, where you start uh, using your code. Then you have node modules, pretty straightforward. You have a package.json. You have a rncliconfig.js. Why? So this is actually, if you're know, familiar with React Native, um, this is a configuration file for React Native. So what React VR uses under the hood is to build this, the, this whole, um, the whole HTML, CSS, uh, GS um, output it uses um, React Native Packager. Um, I can't explain you why, but it does, and it's, um, um, it works. That's pretty cool, at least to me. You have a static asset chessboard. I'm going to explain a little bit why this exists um, in, a, uh, in a second. And then we have VR client chess. We have VR index.html. Um, and we have a yarn log file, because I use yarn. If you use only npm, you don't have that. Not too many files, and looks like this is not too crazy. Um, so let's look at the index.html where we actually start out. Um, it's a normal index.html file. Pretty cool. Um, the only thing that's special here is that we have um, React VR in it. So, so we, uh, uh, we require our bundle. Um, the .js is missing here because that's, that's some React native um, uh, packager magic, but um, <coughs> if you if you require the, the JS, if you make a build and you require the JS file, that's uh, is exactly is like just plain JavaScript. Um, and then we instantiate um, React VR within it, and we do it on the document body. And one important fact here is like you can put the whole VR experience at the whole website with document body, or you could put it simply in a diff. And that's like to me very, very, very interesting that they made this decision. And um, it's basically, I could have a website with like, um, let's say, I always think about uh, uh, a website for for uh, a ski resort. So they could have the normal website, and then they have this little box where they show like the whole um, ski resort in a 3D experience, and it's just a box, and you can expand it, or you can keep it small, or you can click show in VR. And you basically have your normal website, but you also can show a, sp a specific experience just for VR. And that's, I think, very exciting for, for web VR. All right. Um, then we have the client chess file. There's, um, it's, to my taste, a little bit too much boilerplate. Um, it, it, in the end, it's just JavaScript and, and pretty straightforward, simple. Um, the reason they have this is because at this point, when you instantiate the client, you actually can um, inject um, custom FreeJS modules. So you can actually, if you're familiar with FreeJS, you could um, uh, react your builds on top of FreeJS. So you can actually have. Um, if you, if you built uh, free JS stuff in the past, you can actually just put it there and then use it in your, in your React um, uh, source code. And then you, you start um, the animation loop, um, pretty straightforward. And then we go to the interesting part, index.vr.js. That's where your work, uh, where you mostly work and happen. Um, and uh, the first part is just the import, pretty straightforward. What's really interesting here is that it's plain React. Like we use normal React, we use normal React components. Um, 
So you can make custom components, but I will show you that in a bit. And then we have a couple of useful things um, that come from React VR itself. Like um, if you're familiar with um, uh, React Native, you have a view there, which basically is a diff. Like it doesn't do anything, but it's just a wrapper. Um, and so you have a view, you have text, you have a panel, you have style sheet, you have all these things. Um, and then you have this. And this is like basically a root component. And um, if you look at it, it's like react.component, pretty straightforward. We have a render function, all as you know, if you're familiar with React. I put the return there. That's not my usual code style, but um, yeah, there's not enough space. So, <laughs> um, And then you have a few. You have a panel. You have a text. Um, the text is hello. And then we have some styling. Um, the styling basically is, is resembles what you're familiar with, with um, the, the uh, inline styles you, you can use with React, you can create with React on the web, uh, or you're familiar with React Native. They, they're not exactly CSS, but um, they use so it uses Flexbox, it uses parts of CSS, but there are some special um, properties, like for example, layout origin. Like if you have an, a 3D object, it tells you like where the origin is uh, from where you do rotation or where, where it's moved. Um, and then you have things like transform, so you can actually move it away. And what's happening here is this text that has a background color blue is aligned um, centered, also aligned text aligned uh, vertical center. Thank you very much. Um, uh, it's a blaze, you know. Um, and then you have transform translate, and this is basically you have three coordinates that it's x, y, c, and that means like it's x zero, a y zero, and then c is like I move it minus three means I move it three meters away of me. I just said meters. Yes, the team decided to go as units with the metric system. It's meters. Thank you very much. Pretty awesome. Um, and yeah, and the result is like all you did, like this is all the code to get this up and running. It's the background color blue text that is exactly three meters away. And then, and that's the interesting part is, like the whole room, it's just a panel, it's an image. I, I felt like, what, really? That's awesome. Um, so, and if you remember um, our little journey again, we are still in this room in, at, at Earth, my dear Earthians. Um, so, can we do this by ourselves? Like, hell yeah. So, what I did back then is I took this camera, which is a 360 degree camera. So, you, you press a button um, and then it takes an image. Um, with 363. Reality is it takes two images. Um, they are overlapping, so you can see like this here is this or so. I, I'm not 100% sure, but like basically it's like more than uh, takes images like more than eight, 180 degrees, and then you can stitch them together. And oh, that was not. Um, so there's I used the tool PTGUI, um, and the outcome is this. So you actually get like this kind of squeezed image. Um, and then, if we have this kind of squeezed image, we call it agentconf.jpg. It's just a JPEG, nothing special. Um, we can take it, and we can place, replace our JS board with asset agentconf.jpg. Um, and then we, we change the text. We, we don't want to have this blue background. Um, I don't like it. Um, and the result of this Obviously, it's this here. Pretty cool. Right. So this is the first world that we explored, which is basically panoramas. So you take big images. If you discover somewhere on the web, if you make it yourself 360 degree images, you can, with the knowledge you have right now, you can take React VR. You can follow these steps. The video will be on and afterwards, so you can actually um, uh, follow these steps quite easily, and you can create already a VR panorama experience on the web by yourself. Not too much effort. I think it's pretty cool. All right, let's 
um, take it a little bit further. We want to travel to the awesome world for Estonia um, and also learn a little bit about, about its history. So to do that, um, we have to use our, um, yeah, obviously we have to look up in the sky and we have to use our infinite improbability drive, hold your towels, and then we are in space again. Pretty cool. So what's next? I told you, Forestonia. Let's go to Forestonia. Forestonia, a pretty green planet, nothing special there. Um, <laughs> actually, this is how Forestonia started out. That's the, the very early days. And what you can see is, oh, there are two trees. <laughs> not, not yet a forest, but um, two trees. So now that we see these two trees, the big question is like, well, we don't know how to do it yet. So, as we remember, whenever you're lost, you go back to a checker sky to React VR. Let's go back to our fancy book. Let's see. So, how do we create an object? Well, um, let's create an object. I use the tool called Blender. You can use whatever, um, like Cinema 4D or 3DS Max or uh, Maya. Um, and I started out with a cube. Um, a blue cube. That, that was my thing. And what you can do is you can export um, any object. There's like a ton of formats, but the one format that um, React VR currently supports, and there's more coming, is wavefront objects. It's, a, it's just a text file, and it just specifies some coordinates and so on. And then you have an NTL file, which stands for material, uh, and then you have some specifications about the material. So what we can do then is we can basically take this, use our React component, <coughs> and we, have our, we go back to our chess world panel. Um, we have a model, and this is a component that comes with React VR. And what I can do then is I can basically tell it like this object is an asset that I just put in my, my directory under static assets. <coughs> And it's this cube object, and with a material, cube2, I, I, you can see I named it cube2 because I messed up the first time. The export with Blender didn't work. Um, well, now I know. And then I, then I, um, then I put it like 20 meters away, um, 5 meters down, r rotated it uh, with the x-axis 40 degrees and the y-axis 30 degrees. Um, this is some lightning parameter. I still don't understand it. Um, and obviously, because um, we are, we need some light. You know, we, we are, like it's only like uh, shadows and, and colors are only showing up if you have a light source. So I also that also comes with React VR, so you can import it and you can figure out everything in the documentation how it works and so on. Um, but once you did that, like my result was this here. I had a cube that is in my chess room. I don't know how you feel about this, <laughs> but I felt exactly like this. This is like, from here on, oh yeah, the possibilities are infinite, you know. All right, so that was me a couple of weeks back. Um, pretty exciting. So, how do we build? Let's, you know, we're still traveling, you know. So how do we build our, our trees? Well, you just make two more objects with Blender, um, just a tree crown, a tree trunk, and then you build a tree component. And a tree component, you know, here I stopped using, I like stateless function components, so I use the stateless function component, you know? No random method, you just return JSX. So I put this in a tree.js file, I imported a few, I used this few, and I even pass in the style so you can move the tree. And then I have two models, and again, it's a tree, uh, tree trunk and a tree crown. And um, because I made the tree trunk a, bit, a little bit too big, so I scaled <coughs> it down. You can transfer that with the styles. And then I put the tree trunk a little bit on top of the, both had the, had the origin point in like zero, zero. So I put the tree crown a little bit on top because I wanted to have like every a tree. They know that the, the crown is not inside the trunk. It's actually like on top of the trunk. Yeah. And that's what we did. And the result is two trees. 
Actually, it's like one tree, but I, I used the same tree again and like just positioned it a little bit. And that's pretty cool. All right. So history lesson, first part. Um, this was for Estonia in its early days, two trees, um, otherwise just green. Um, so let's move a little bit forward in time. And how does uh, forest Estonia look like today? It's actually a forest, you know? So now that we have forest Estonia, and there's a lot of trees, there's even like um, really, really, really beautiful trees. Um, so do we want to place all these trees manually if we use RegVR? How do we do that? I don't know. Let's go back to our good guide, the Hitchhiker's Guide. Um, so what I wanted to do in the end is basically automate the process. And what I did is, by all means, like this was way, definitely the way most complicated part of my, my whole uh, React VR experience until now, because it's math, you know. I, I <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, what I did is I basically created a grid of x, y position. So it's like a grid of x, y position points. And I, I put some randomness there. I, in, initially, it was not random. It was like really a grid of x x1, x1, um, y1, um, x1, y2, and you know, so on and so forth. So I used um, Randa and created a cross product of ranges, and then you get this grid, and I, I put some random positions there. Um, that makes it pretty cool, because then you have positions. And then what you can do is you build a forest component. And that's the whole point. That's like, this is really, really essential. You can take, I imported the tree component on top of here. You can see it, um, imagine it. Um, but the tree component that we just built, we took it and we, we can take it and we can put it into a forest component. And suddenly you can have the same power that you have with React on the web and React native. Like you can build structures of, of worlds. Or like we build websites, but here you can build worlds just with components. Um, and in this case, I just built a forest component. What I did is, I basically the trees is my my x y positions. I um, I map over them, and I basically create an array of trees here, and just for translate every tree to this specific x y position, and that's all you need. That's pretty cool, and that is all you need to build a forest. You build a tree. You build a forest component, and then you use the forest component. You just put it into your index.vr.js, and that's it. That's pretty cool. All right. Yeah, and basically, that was the result. Like, I know it looks stupid, but it's so awesome. You can imagine. Really enjoyed this. The first time I was in there, I was like, wow, I just built a forest. <laughs> um, and for those of you who haven't tried that, um, uh, my girlfriend, like, she was always like, this looks stupid, this can't be fun, you know? And the first time, like, I, 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 I built this forest, she was like, okay, let me actually try, you know? I'm, I'm curious what you do there. And she put it on, and, like, the most fascinating moment to me is, like, she, start, she started to literally, like, try to grab the tree, touch the tree. And that, that is, like, that is pure immersiveness that you're in this experience when you actually try to, to touch something because you see it and you, it's, it's fantastic. Um, it's really cool technology. All right, so now that we know how to create a panel and a world, um, I'm curious, who of you actually is going to try out React VR tonight? I want to know. OK. Yeah. Not, <laughs> not. Well, let's travel a bit further. Let's see. Um, oh God. By the way, space traveling is hard. <laughs> if you haven't figured that yet. Well, so let's see how Marvin thinks about the amount of people who raise their hands. <laughs> <laughs> I think he's pretty depressed. <laughs> All right, yeah, and if you try it, keep one thing in mind, don't panic. Thank you very much, that's it.
One last thing. I documented everything. I put it on web VR experiments. You can try it out there. Um, you can see I made the steps. Um, you can just go into and run the experiences. Um, Thank you. Um, yeah, questions? Sure. Uh, yeah. Yes, so you have, um, you have access to the camera, so you can actually move things. Um, it's a bit tricky though. So for example, for um, the, the Samsung devices, they're like the low-end devices, they don't have position tracking yet. So you can only, like they have head tracking where you look. So like moving, walking with an Oculus or with an HTC Vive, if you take a step right, you actually m take a step right in the in the VR world. With these devices, that's not possible or not yet possible. Um, so, um, if you build web VR stuff and you want to reach a larger audience, um, you don't do like walking experiences. Um, but what you obviously can do is you can control the camera and you can move people. Um, Reality is from like a UX perspective. Uh, um, don't try to simulate walking. Um, it starts to feel pretty unnatural and then people throw up. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, yeah. It's like we're super early with this whole um, web VR or VR stuff in general. Like, um, there's so many UX patterns that, like, if they you know from the web or, or in general, they don't apply to VR. You have to, we have to reimagine the whole thing, and it's it's a very fascinating um, environment. Yeah, but teleporting is pretty well. So teleporting is yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Yes, there's basic support for, for controllers. Um, so yes, teleporting, absolutely, you can do that. I mean, this is, this is exactly what I basically did here. You could, you could um, I could make a point here, a button, and then if you, if you look at it um, and you be in there for one second, you actually teleport there. Um, that's a, or with Oculus, some games, you actually point to something and then you teleport there if you, if you hit the button. Yeah. Um, yeah. There's there's a lot of um, yes you can do that. Yeah. Timo? Yeah, um, sorry. Yeah, I'm just curious about one, one thing. Uh, could you try out writing your own custom shaders? Because I saw like the command lit that just highlights the object itself. But yeah. Uh, could you try that out? Um, so the question was, could you actually um, write your own shaders? Um, Yes and no. I mean, you, y definitely yes. You can put any free JS object <coughs> in there, and any free JS object basically supports um, uh, shaders. Then, so like uh, uh, free JS itself supports shaders. Um, so yes, you can do that. Um, in React VR, uh, like the, the out of the box model um, doesn't support that yet, but I'm pretty sure they're gonna add it at some point. You have you have, you also have to know. Sorry, I haven't mentioned that it's pre-release, so they haven't open sourced it yet. I mean, you can look at the sources unminified, so you get a pretty good sense of like what they're doing there. Um, but um, uh, like React VR itself is still early stages. Uh, but yeah, you can use shaders if you if you use your own models, and they have examples how to use put a custom free JS model into React VR that you can use it as a component. Then, okay. yeah. um, so uh, could you like just follow up question? Could you like look into the code itself and see like how the lid function, for example, is written? Yes, absolutely. Is it like C, C, uh, similar code, or is it just like pure? It's JavaScript. It's pure JavaScript. There's no magic. It's just WebGL, you know. And so in the actually under the hood, it's free JS. So at some at some point, you're gonna see like where they map from this model to a free JS um, function or a free JS option or so. So it's like it's plain simple um, JavaScript. And under the hood, it's WebGL. Nothing special. There's no no C magic. We can't have that in a browser yet. Except WebAssembly, but that's another topic. <laughs> sure. Yeah, I know 
this is a web standard, but uh, the language is, is similar with uh, React Native. I see the view and the test yeah. is different with React. Yeah. How about the uh, using the React Native in this VR? Uh, no. Talk about the future. It's How too different. The web is, I think, is not future. Because not most of people use mobile phones. Yeah. Mobile phones use web very, very slow. Use React to write to um yeah so um you can't use it right now did uh, and as far as i know they don't um react vr itself just focuses web vr that's at least for now maybe at some point in the future they they make the map exactly the same components to an, a react native version um but then under the hood you basically would need to target OpenGL and that's a whole different story. Um, is the web um, fast enough? Um, if you use, like, I'm not too concerned about the performance of, um, of the, the mobile phones because um, I'm rather concerned about like how much do you download. You know, if you have a lot of models, the, it, it pretty it adds up pretty fast. So I think for now, WebVR is is like more a uh, really fun low polygon experience that you get quickly, um, and it's not like photorealistic uh, or like real world realistic um, games. That that would be. Um, too much. So I think we, we start from there, but I think you can do a lot with it already. Yeah. Any, yeah. Sorry. So on the desktop browsers, it uses a web chat on the hood. Yeah. Do you know on the mobile devices, if they maybe target the native open chair uh, rendering pipeline? I don't think so because they also have WebGL. I mean, in, in reality, uh, maybe they do something, but then it's like FreeJS. If FreeJS does something special on mobile devices, then obviously they do it as well. But yeah, it's whatever FreeJS uses. Okay. Uh, maybe they do special stuff that I don't know of, but uh, as far as I always like um, heard it and read up on it, um, it's just plain FreeJS. Um, you, yeah. Do you know if there's already something to import 360 degree videos? Um, the question was, is there something to import 360 degree videos? Uh, not yet. There's only um, there's a video component to import and, and show uh, 2D videos. I guess that's coming at some point, but it's not there yet. I'm really curious like how this will work because like streaming is quite expensive and it's a lot of content if you want to show it in a high resolution so yeah i'm i'm at the point i'm really curious about like when this is coming and how it will work yeah. do you need a whole server component that has proper streaming <laughs> implemented or i, I don't know uh, yeah it could be tricky you can also stream locally yeah so yeah. video textures are working on webgl I will give a short demo later. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <coughs> um, any other question? Uh, can you imagine some other applications, like real life applications? How can I like suggest it to my bosses so we can? Because <laughs> 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 you know, that uh, looks so awesome and so simple. Yeah. I would really love it. something like background is 3D of like when you log in or something. Um, I, I think you have to. Um, I wouldn't think of it like back as a background thingy, but it's rather um, like applications. So let's say real-world applications. Um, you you sell mechanical parts. If you sell mechanical parts, you could basically on for every part you could um, have a button show this in VR, and then suddenly the the browser switches to the VR mode. Yeah, of course, yeah. That that's the tricky part. I think, uh, like in general, like the hardest part of VR is content, like the 3D content. It's, I mean, there's a lot of um, people build stuff out there, but I think it's still like it's not really easy yet to get a lot of content and to build stuff. 
And uh, even if you get from all these platforms like different content, it's not consistent um, because and yeah, if you have like a photorealistic Earth and then like a, um, a, a comic moon, it's not gonna work as a interesting experience. So that's yeah, we're in the beginning there. But I think I hope. <coughs> in in React VR, you have Sphere, uh, Plane, Cube, um, a couple very basic ones. But I'm thinking a lot about um, building something where you like auto published uh, a lot of components to npm, and yeah, may maybe I is it not yet. There's the simple things, but um, I hope and wish there would be more in the future. Maybe I work on it, but yeah. And for real-world applications, um, I don't know. It's so early. I, I think it's um, we have to see what people build. Um, yeah, and think about it. I, I think there will be crazy fun, um, like games, obviously. But then also for psychology, for example, if somebody is, is afraid of of um, spaces with a lot of people. Um, they actually use this in psychology with VR already. I mean, it's not specifically web VR, but VR in general. Like, you put people into spaces with a lot of people, and then it's a very neat way of like training them that you actually can you can super quickly get out. You know, you don't have to get to to a, a, a train station and then panic. You actually you get the feeling for the experience, and then you just um, move away the goggles and you get out of it. And yeah, that's. A lot of it is used in engineering to better understand, like, you know, 2D drawing. Um, it's hard to imagine if you actually see it in 3D, real world. Art is an interesting one. There's a, a tool called Google Paintbrush, or not Paintbrush, Tiltbrush. Or so, I don't know. Uh, Tiltbrush, yeah. It's, it's so good. It's such a cool experience to, like, be in a 3D space and you can draw a line and, um, yeah, I, I draw. I've drawn a, a DNA string, and it's like, if somebody shows me that on like 2D paper, I, I like for for the first time, I think it's it's a way neat experience of explaining it. Yeah. yeah so I teaching yeah, might be an yeah might be a nice application. Yeah. Or getting a sense of like the solar system, mm -hmm. you know. A couple of 2D drawings, we always see like there's a couple of circles, but actually it's like they go in elliptical, like some of it, it's not like a flat line, <laughs> they, they go all around. And yeah, if you visualize that, you get, yeah, give people a better understanding. Yeah, well, I'm asking because when we already uh, were thinking about like we have <coughs> some kind of like lab application website where we show like scale state and everything, a lot of graphs and so yeah. on. Absolutely. Yeah, I, I think we're. Like it's kind of like play <coughs> playful approach, but still it would be like something out of the yeah. book. Absolutely. I think uh, there's one interesting example, which is um, er Eric um, Florenzo. I think I, I hopefully pronounced his name correctly. Um, he built a visualization of comments um, in VR of Reddit threads. Mm -hmm. And it's amazing because you can see. Um, um, like uh, 2D comments are really hard to pass, you know, they get very, very uh, deep and then you don't, you don't, you lose a lot of context. But in this case, you could actually see like where was an interesting comment and then suddenly a whole tree spans out and it gets really, really interesting. And um, obviously, most of them were um, trolls. <laughs> and then, but it's, it's like, it, it gives you a really good understanding. Like data visualization is a field that can definitely benefit from it, but we are so early. It's really early. Just yeah. maybe, do you know if it works with something like HoloLens from Microsoft? Uh, the mixed reality thing, I think. I'm that's not sure which a good question. It was. They showed the HoloLens here. Yeah. yeah. It was. It was. It was me actually. Yeah. <laughs> 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 so. Um, so the yeah. qu question is like, does it work with HoloLens and, and or in general like AR devices? Um, I don't know. Mm -hmm. um, 
because they don't have a browser, right? It, well, yeah, but I mean, the, the browser is just an implementation detail. So if the HoloLens supports uh, the WebVR APIs, they would be in. Okay. No problem. Yeah. Okay. Um, Let's cut it though. Yeah. If you have any more questions, Nick will be there. So just really? Yeah. So thank you very much. Cool. Thank you.